Hey guys, I found this really cool button in GarageBand uh, for iOS and I want to build it for you. So it's this one over here, it's this power button and it, you can see it's quite lifelike. Uh, it actually looks like a bit of a mixing board uh, and it's more than just a color and a border. So there's a, a few things going on here. So let's show you how um, Apple have achieved this effect. Firstly, we're going to mask our screenshot that we got here just from uh, my iPhone. We're going to put it next to our artboard so we can kind of copy from it and see exactly how it's built. So we'll start with a rectangle that's roughly the same size as that button. And you'll notice the first thing is that it has some rounded edges on it. So I'm going to turn the border off and I'm going to put the radius up to about 15. That's giving it nice round edges. Um, and it's not this color here. It looks like it starts dark down here and finishes light in the corner. Like there's light shining from above it. So we're going to set ourselves a gradient and we're going to color pick the darkest up in the top right hand corner. We're going to pick the other side of the gradient as the lightest part in the bottom left here. And what we'll do is we'll just pull them into the 45 degrees and we've got a very subtle shade uh, going across the button here. So there's that's the beginning of the, the effects. Next we'll add some borders. Uh, I'm going to grab the color from the outside of this, see how they've done it. Looks like it's a nice thick gray. And we'll set that to four pixels uh, on the inside. And then there's a like a white light bouncing off it that starts light up here and then goes dark when it hits all the bottom. So the good thing about sketch is you can build multiple fills and multiple borders on one um, style itself and make it make a big style. So we'll add another border. We're going to drag it underneath like layers so it sits underneath and we'll set it to double the amount of the initial button. Uh, Sorry, we'll uh, set that to eight and we'll set that to four. Uh, no, no, I was right the first time. I just got to have that as inside <laughs> rather than center. So you can see now that you've got a four pixel border there and an eight pixel border, you can see that they're even lines. Um, they look like they're four pixels each, but this white line is, is, too, is too thick. So it starts off with a light shining above and then there's a bit of a shadow underneath. So I reckon we can... Fill that with a gradient. We'll set the top as a white at 30%. And we'll set the bottom as a black at 30%. And to just make it a bit more subtle with our gradients, I'm just going to drag it so it starts off the button either side. Uh, and then maybe drag this a little bit in. There you go, and you can really see how it uh, the light looks like it's it's coming from above. So I still think there's a, a few more shadowing elements we can bring around here. I'm going to add some uh, inner shadows inside here, and we'll set up this uh, bottom one first on a negative y-axis, and you can see that it's it's coming into the the button there, and we'll set that to that looks like this element here is a little bit lighter and then this is a little bit darker. So we'll set this one as a white. We'll turn down the opacity nice and low. I'm just going to up that blur. And turn the opacity down. Drop that down a little bit. It's just a little glow that emphasizes this little bump in our button here. And I'm going to do the same by adding another inner shadow and dealing with the top bit there. So it should be positive 12. We're just, rep we're just replicating the same uh, elements over this right-hand side here, just at different colors. Um, when, when doing this, you'll find the black is usually stronger than white. So the black will have to be, sorry, the white is stronger than the black. You'll figure that the, the white will have to be turned down a bit more than black. Um, and so I'll leave that here at about, about 50. And that will give us, I didn't need to make it a bit more blurry. 
and that'll give us a little lip at the top here. So we're looking pretty similar now. There are a few more things. You can see that it's because it's quite pressed off the page that it's actually running a, a standard shadow that sits at the bottom, which is quite thick. I'm gonna run it up to about 70 alpha. Let it drop down a few and then add a bit of blur to it. And so I'm gonna make it even thicker than that. Uh, and that will that'll look nice. So that'll that'll be sitting off the bottom of the page. Um, great. So and now you can also see that to replicate this real life feel, they've added a bit of noise to it, so a bit of like a a texture, like a leather texture almost. And I think we can add that to our uh, button by adding a plus and changing the fill into a noise. Uh, we'll keep it as an original, and we'll move the intensity down nice and low. And we'll change this to, uh, I think overlay might work the best. Yeah, we can pop it up a little bit more. Just to about, just about eight. So as you zoom back out, you can, you can really see how this button's kind of coming along and how it's looking. Uh, we'll get our final power symbol on it. Now what I will use is I've got a library of icons. Um, you can get these uh, for free. You just have to, um, when you're using them in a commercial project, um, you will have to um, give notice. But until then, you can use these, no worries. So these are all SVGs. I can just drag and drop them. They've all been named. Um, so it makes it super easy when you're on the fly. We're gonna scale that one up to about 300%, see how that looks. Not big enough. Five fifty. And we'll drag that in the middle. You'll see with these two red lines that it's in the middle now. So once we have it in there, there's a different, slightly different styling. You can see that there's a rounded edge up the top corners here, and even these are a little bit rounded as well. So ours is a little bit sharp. So we can go into ours and double click into the shape we want to edit, select the vector points, and just add a, oh, just a one pixel, just enough to, to take the, the quite literally the edge off it. Uh, and then we can do the same on this as well by holding shift and I'm clicking all four of the vector points and adding a two picks around it. So it's quite similar. We will change the fill to white. It's, it's definitely a white, it might even be a gray. And it looks like it has a, a shadow and a, a border around it. So we'll add a border that's the same color as their, uh, their outside. And I'm just going to make it drop it a tiny bit in opacity at about a 1.5 pixel uh, thickness. And then the last thing it, it has is a, a shadow just sitting at the bottom just to make it sit off the page a tiny bit. It's not a very big shadow and it's not a very noticeable shadow but it kind of works with the border. Uh, we'll make it a little bit thicker. There we go. So if you were to make the background color the same as this back, you'll see it sits on it pretty well. You zoom out and it looks like a real lifelike button. So the brilliance of this and the brilliance of Sketch is that once you grab this, you can actually create it as a layer style. And I'm gonna call this complex AF button. And now that it's a style, we can insert new shapes, such as an oval, and select the layer style as complex AF button, and it will automatically apply all the stuff that we need to it. Uh, and you can do that to a bunch of different buttons as well, um, keeping the design system nice and easy. So yeah, if you are like that, let me know. Um, I'm gonna make a few more complex buttons in a few future tutorials. I'm thinking about going to game UI, uh, League of Legends and, and some of the Clash of Clans. 
So let me know if that's what you're after and uh, I'll see you guys there.